Hey, welcome to Stay at Home Dads Podcast. Justin, your host here once again on this fine day in 2022. So here we are, one week in. How are those resis holding up? Are you doing well? Or have you succumbed to your old ways yet? Hopefully not. Hopefully everyone's uh, doing good so far. All right, so today's show is actually part two of my friend Doug's interview or show that we recorded back before Christmas. In this episode, we get into some divorce talk as well as a little bit of COVID stuff. So sounds super exciting, right? Also in this episode, I mentioned divorce rate and reference an article that shows data by state listing percentages of marriages that end in divorce. So that's what I quoted, but they also list data in terms of divorces per 1,000. So take Nevada, for example. They show the percentage of marriages that end in divorce at 14%. And the website also shows that Nevada has 10.2 divorces per 1,000 women. So it can get a little bit confusing. So I will link that article in the description so you can kind of check it out yourself. We often hear that the D-rate is at almost 50%. And yeah, that's a scary figure. But can it really be that high? That seems like crazy high, 50%. I think they get that number by dividing the number of divorces by the number of marriages for any certain year. But I don't think it's really that cut and dry. So I actually have another article I'll link in the description that kind of breaks down some of those numbers a little bit, and it might give a little bit of insight on what's going on. So the figures I use in this episode, I think are accurate, but I am not 100% sure. So just wanted to put a little disclaimer out there. Anyways, I hope you enjoy this episode. The audio is not that great once again, but I'm kind of working on that for future episodes. So that should get better. And without further ado, here is part two. What are your thoughts on, well, and it's fresh in our mind too. And that's, what are your thoughts on divorce? Oh man. You knew this was probably going to come because a friend of ours is going through this. They shall remain nameless, but um, he's in the throes of this like immediately right now. And it's a tough time for him for spouse, for anybody that's going through it, it's a, it's, it was awful. a shock. Like I get our setup here that we have in our, our neighborhood is pretty awesome. Everyone seems to be in their late thirties with a couple of kids. Um, and he's, he's in that same boat mm-hmm. and, uh, and yeah, he came and told us one day that he's getting a divorce and we're like, what? <laughs> I didn't know what to, I, he, he has to come over and talk. And I thought he was going to, the way he said it, and he wanted me and my wife to be there. I thought he was going to try and sell us into a pyramid scheme or something. Right. We're know, having a third was, baby. Something. <laughs> yeah. I, the last thing I thought he was going to say was divorce. And yeah, it, it was just a, a shocker. I'm still shocked by it. Yeah. And so I don't even know. I'm like, man, I make my wife angry a lot, but would would that would it lead to divorce? I, right. I hope not. <laughs> well, they say. I mean, nationally, I think the divorce rates like ten to fourteen percent. Pretty much average and everything. It's like fifty percent. Well, the by state. So by I looked at this thing like two weeks ago, and by state it was nine percent to fourteen percent. Okay. Could you guess what state was fourteen percent? California, Nevada, <laughs> your old state. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and I think Indiana, where we are, was twelve or thirteen. Oh, still pretty high. Though. So, I mean, not. You would think it would be more, but. Where'd that fifty percent stat come from? Because I, I don't know. Because I that's why I looked it up. Because I was I thought the same thing. So I did some research and it said what I found. Only so. twelve, but still that's yeah, one in ten or one in eleven. But I just yeah, I don't I don't know what leads up to it. I don't know how you get to that point. Um, some and, and some people I think are really kind of I think new people. I guess what I'm trying to say is like it seems people think it's real it's cavalier, I guess. Does that make sense? Or whatever that word is. Where people don't it it doesn't mean that much to people anymore. Oh, marriage? Yes. Like people just get divorced and you talk to them and they say, Well, if I'm if I'm not happy we'll just get we'll just get divorced. Or like boyfriends and girlfriends, like they, they just the turnover rate seems high to me. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah, no, it's a lifelong commitment, right? You stand up there and you say for better, for worse, for richer, for poorer. So it's. I mean, this makes 
like after me and my wife found out, I don't know if it did this for you guys, but, and then we start, we don't look at ourselves, but then we just wonder, you kind of wonder a little bit, like, could that get sprung on anybody? Yeah. My wife said the same thing to me. She's like, what the, are we getting divorced? I was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. <laughs> like, no, that guy is like, <laughs> no, we're yeah. fine. <laughs> I know. It's like a bad word, the D, <laughs> the D word, yeah. you know, but I think there has to be some serious breakdown of something. There has to be red flags, I would think. Yeah. Little shit, little things that add up. I get it. You know, like you said, that you and your wife argue or fight or not even fight, but just little, little moments, right? Yeah. That I think everybody has, but do those just build up in some people to where they don't deal with those issues and then they just erupt and overflow and then you get what you get like they're going through? Yeah. It's so hard because there's no like smoking gun in this mm-hmm. situation that you can point to. You can't say he cheated on her or she cheated on him or Right, that's cut and dried. Yeah. And it's oh you 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 had sex with the receptionist, you're gone. You know, or yeah. you 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 had sex with a pool boy and you're gone. But this is more Yeah. What's ir- irreconcilable differences might be the term if you did the paperwork. <laughs> I don't know, I'm not a lawyer. Yeah, yeah is it just keeping do they keep do you does your new wife keep score? Do you yeah, like she'll, she'll like be subconsciously like, keep no, score. She'll tell me the score. <laughs> she'll bring stuff up that's like, well, remember uh, three weeks ago and when when I did all the dishes. I'm like, well, no, I don't. No. <laughs> this ebbs. It's supposed to ebb and flow, right? Yeah. It just happens that way. But I did all the dishes the past three days. Does that count? No, no. <laughs> I'm talking about the time three weeks ago when I did all the dishes. I think. Yeah. Right. I mean. We don't really keep score here, but when I look, like after we heard about them, I kind of look around and look at myself and I'm like, well, my wife does a lot of stuff. I don't know about your house, but my wife, she does pretty much all laundry. I do. The, uh, she does a lot of like the deep cleaning in the, you know, stuff like that. But I don't do a lot. of. I clean kitchens. I cook. I, I do the basic stuff, but, and I do all the outside stuff. I do a lot of that, but she does. The lawn, the mainly the laundry. That's like the big one that I, I don't yeah. even like touch. That that sounds like our house too. My wife does all the laundry, and I yeah I do a lot of the cooking, a lot of the cleaning, just cleaning up the kitchen, that sort of stuff. And yeah, all the outside stuff. Although she does a pretty good job gardening. Yeah, she's got that green thumb, right? Yeah. Is that what they call that? Yeah, she grows tomatoes and all sorts of vegetables and flowers. I don't know. I think guys are really good at bearing like their feelings, you know. Like they you guys push that down. They don't they don't they don't complain or open their mouth about every little thing that bothers them. They just right. kind of, But apparently women do it too <laughs> because that's the, the situation that's happening there. But I just don't I don't know. I think it's a lack of communication. I think it's people don't sit around and talk and and kind of work those things out and say, "Hey, this bothered me" or "Hey, that bothered me." Do you talk? Do you, so? Do you talk to your wife? Do you? Do you guys? One thing I've heard is not with you guys, but just in general, is about talking about your day or talking about stuff like. Do you guys sit down and oh, how was your meeting you had on the phone the other day, or how was this or that? Yeah, see, we're like in a weird situation. We both work from home, so we're well. And, we well you both work for the same company. Yeah, too, we work so. for the same company, and we both work from home. We're not on the same team or anything, you know, but although we are closer than we have been in company proximity wise lately, but, um, yeah, no, our days are pretty much, are pretty well intertwined. Like if I take my headphones off, I can hear her conversations and vice versa. So yeah, we'll, we'll, you know, check in every every so often during the day or we'll go on walks together during the day. Um, I think that stuff's important. I think that talking to each other and I think bringing up, you know, I saw some show and it was a couple and they were talking about, oh, how was your day? And the woman told the, the guy how her day was. And then he said, well, are you going to ask me about how my day was? And she was like, no, your day sucked. So I know your day, you didn't have a good day or whatever. So I'm not going to ask you. And then I just think that dynamic is important. And like you said, going for walks is important. And, and just having that kind of normal conversation is is kind of a good thing. And sex life is a good thing, too like doing that. And I think once that stops any of those things, then that's when you have to kind of 
have that conversation and be like, hey, what's going on? And kind of get ahead of it and not just push it off to the side and just go about the day and get into this mode of, I call it, I've called it something else on this show, kind of like a business, you know, where, where it's, you're a roommate oh, and you okay. just, all you just function, but there's no real, how was your day or no chemistry or no any of that stuff, you know? And then I think if that goes on too long, which maybe that's the case in, in, in some of these divorces and stuff, I think that kind of, I don't know, leads yeah. up to it. In my it's opinion. tough. Like, yeah. You got to like really work at it sometimes to, with kids around mm-hmm. and, you know, they, they, like we said before, they put you at your wits end and sometimes the last thing you're thinking about is, is your spouse because or feelings or whatever. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because yeah, you just yelled at your four year old cause he wouldn't take a shit for the last hour. <laughs> and, and the last thing I want to do is then think about my wife's feelings, but right. really, they, uh, that's or then you snap at your, your wife <laughs> because you're irritated here and then she says something and then you snap that way and then you didn't mean it at all, yeah. but then they get offended and if you don't go back and be in and say, hey, I'm sorry I said that or I'm sorry that I did that, like later I'm talking, you know, yeah. before bed. I've always had this this um, piece of advice is never go to bed angry or never go to bed. If there's that looming cloud of something happened earlier in the day, I always try, even at least with my wife, to kind of squash it by the time we're laying down in bed and be like, hey, I'm sorry I was a big dick today. I'm sorry that that, I'm sorry I said this, whatever, or vice versa. She'll say stuff to me, you know, if she, if, and and you can read body language too and see that, that she's not happy with me right now. And then you kind of poke a little bit and ask some questions and get her to get her to open up, you know, and I do that. And I think that just makes the dynamic kind of better and it's a little more open. Gets it out there. Right. That's, that's just my opinion. And I've, I've, been better because I usually bottle up my feelings and so I've been getting better at if someone says something not snapping back at them but just saying hey like why do you say it in that tone like why why do you say that that way I didn't I didn't appreciate that or whatever and then it's just it doesn't build up that way it kind of you kind of pop the top a little bit and yeah yeah. pressure relief yeah one thing that actually helped us a lot too was buying our hot tub (laughs) oh okay like no joke um because that so we've had a hot tub for like a year now and putting that out there, we'll bring like a boom box with us and, but our phones will be on the deck. So we have no phones, we have nothing. And you just sit in there with your spouse or you sit in there with friends or whatever. So you just talk and you just talk and you, you, you actually communicate and it's, it was amazing. And I'm not saying that we bought it cause we had problems. Like we have no intention of getting divorced or no, none of that, but it just, forces it was, it was like another that. thing. Yes. It forces you to, to have conversations and to kind of appreciate somebody else, you know. This would be a great time to drop a hot tub ad into, into the show. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> to get 25% off at you know, the hot tub world. Today's episode is brought to you by CalSpa. <laughs> Use code STAYATHOMEDAD to receive 22% off and a free starter kit. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> all right. Where am I out of here? That's all I really had. Oh, what what's one thing your wife does that drives you nuts? I think we all have something. Um, I don't want to get you in trouble in case <laughs> anybody listens to this, but it just so yeah, they're never going to listen to this, right? Um, I don't know. I feel like I, I'm having trouble grasping an example, but like I know how the how it goes. Like in in practice, it's I get she gets really mad at me for something that I don't even think twice about. I'm trying to think like what would be that that scenario, and I. I well, that's good. That's good that you don't have a, a, an actual thing. Like, I can't stand it when my wife does whatever when she farts. <laughs> she doesn't do that. That's yeah, just an example. <laughs> no. Sure, sure. My wife gets. She gets. Megan gets mad at me when I will be watching football, like it's on right now, and she'll come into the kitchen to do dishes or whatever. And for some reason, my body compels me. To go into the kitchen and do something. Uh But I think it's a subconscious thing because I see her doing something and then I feel like, well, I'm a stay-at-home parent. I should get up and do something. right? Right. So then I'll come in here and then she gets mad at me because I get in her space while she's like doing dishes or cooking or whatever. And then I'm just clogging up the kitchen with my body and she gets mad. Yeah. So that's easy fix. Just stay on the couch. Yes. (laughs) Stay on the couch, Justin. Just (laughs) sit back and ignore that your wife is in the kitchen. Yeah. I get that's That's a similar situation for us if if 
my wife's doing something and I'm sitting on the couch, I can just feel like the hate (laughs) emanating like a cloud (laughs) coming towards me um, as I'm just relaxing on the couch, even if it had been just for a minute or two. And she's up doing stuff and taking care of kids. I can read her mind. You can feel it. Feel it. Like, what are you doing on the couch? I am whatever (laughs) doing a dish or something. Yeah. So I, yeah, I'm napping on the couch. It's fine. (laughs) Feed now feed the children. (laughs) <laughs> and make me dinner leave me alone so i can <laughs> relax no yeah it's not a kidding, good idea. kidding yeah <laughs> joking my wife will watch a movie with me and she will continually check her phone that bothers me and then she ask you about the plot of the movie no but a, it'll a part will come up and it'll be like, did you see that and she's like what and she looks up from her phone <sighs> we're trying to we're bonding here. <laughs> see, so that's that. That's see, that's where we go to the hot tub, and we put our phones away. So, but uh, yeah, that's. Uh, oh, there's another thing I want to talk to you about. I don't know if you have anything you want to talk about, but I would kind of want to hear your thoughts on COVID. Oh man, I have no notes to read <laughs> off of this. I I don't have any notes on it. So, um, I had this this thing that I was thinking about with COVID, and. It was with masks and stuff, and they say, you read a lot of studies or you read a lot of news, and it says masks don't work with children, right? But I don't care. I I don't care about masks. I I think you care about masks, but that's besides the point. But I had this idea, and I was like, the reason that kids aren't getting sick with other sicknesses is because the masks keep the kids from touching their damn faces is what it is. That's what I thought. Okay. With putting their fingers in your mouth and picking your nose and touching your face and i think that's where the other viral stuff is coming in like oh kids quit getting colds and the flu is down and blah 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 yeah maybe they're not like picking up random doritos off the ground right. and eating them yes like, and then and then touching the the community crayons and then putting a crayon in your mouth like they're they're not doing that and that's i just thought of this the other day and i was like that's why they're not getting colds but now my kids just got colds like really bad two weeks ago so yeah we maybe that's not cold going through my house too i'm just getting over it no, I mean, yeah. I, Are you I'm, over it? Yes, I'm over it. This is, I'm so tired of it. And like, yes, the masks will stop liquid droplets right. from exiting your yeah. mouth. But when is a liquid droplet exiting your mouth? When you're coughing or when you're sneezing? Mm-hmm. When you're just talking, not much liquid comes out. <laughs> <laughs> Unless you have or something going on. And then it's like, oh, coughing and sneezing. Don't we teach our kids to cover their mouth when they do that? Sneeze into their arm? Right. And yeah, so then past that, like, what the hell is a mask doing for a six-year-old other than maybe traumatizing them and scarring them psychologically? And, and who, el- who else knows what, you know, they, their elementary school experience has become? Has, you know? Yeah, it's morphed into, you know, it's, it's almost making some kids, even my seven-year-old, Olivia, to where... We're like, okay, we're gonna go to the grocery store, and she's she says, "Where's where's my mask? Where's where's my mask? I need it." Yeah, they have anxiety. Yeah, about she's it. turned to to like, oh, I need it, and then we're getting we're leaving to, to go to the store. Well, we still got to run the car for twenty minutes, and she's putting it on in the car, and I'm saying, "Sweetie, you don't you don't have to put the mask on in the car." Yeah, we're not even to the store yet. Um, it's fine. Sometimes I don't even have her wear it in the store. Um, but yeah, and she wrote actually, she just brought an assignment home last week, and it was. My name is Olivia, and here are things I dislike. And one of them was masks. Yes, <laughs> it was hell hilarious. yeah, Olivia, I'm with you. <laughs> and I was like, what? I was like, sweetie, what masks are these? What are what? What mask are you? T-? And she's like, any mask. And I was like, okay, I'm not going to pick any more. Hell yeah, my daughter Lila. Maybe it's I influenced her. I don't know, but she feels a similar way. And like last year, there she'd get an invite to a birthday party, and on the invite, the parents would write, "Wear a mask." And I, when I see that, I'm like, that birthday party. <laughs> and I, look, I don't, I try not to influence Lila. Right. right. But I, 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 you know, we did have to say, like, Lila, we got RSVP. Do you want to go to this birthday party? And she'd be like, yes. I'm like, you have to wear a mask. And she would immediately change nope. her decision. She'd be like, well, no, I'm not going to go to that. Really? One. So I'm just like, yes. <laughs> That's funny how, you know, kids know and they, they kind of uh, can pick up on stuff like that. And, and, and you probably influenced her a little bit, but that's oh, fine. Yeah. It's your kid, you know, but I don't know. So it's, uh, 
it's a battle. I haven't gotten. I have. I'm. I'm. I'm immunized. <laughs> okay, um, Aaron Rodgers. <laughs> I'm immunized. No, I, I have my COVID shots, but I haven't gotten a booster yet. So I haven't scheduled it. I haven't. I probably will, but it's just like another. Another step, and then six months it is it'll yeah, be. Yeah, where does it, where do your boosters end? I don't know. <laughs> I'll have to get a never. new car when my car gets full of boosters on it. You know, there's only so many spots to write boosters. So yeah, so. I don't. I don't know. It's uh, hopefully. Well, that's the other thing too is the news keeps talking about um cases and and cases are going up and stuff, but then you see like that football game on the TV, the stands are full. <laughs> Packed, packed full. Uh, the hockey game we went to the other week was pretty full. Yeah. And there's no ma- no one's wearing masks. And you would think if that was the case, either cases would be exploding. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like if, if, so the vaccines must somewhat be working. Yeah. I mean, the deaths, I, I haven't looked at the stats recently, but I feel like the deaths have, have kind of died down. Mm-hmm. But yeah, people are getting it. And they're and they're dealing and they're with yeah they're breakthrough cases even with vaccinated people and they're they're seem to be okay but yeah a lot of the cases now are vaccinated people so then it makes you wonder like I don't know I don't, I don't know yeah I don't know just another another uh, something to I yeah guess. I I just and you see a football stadium like that where you got sixty thousand people not yeah. wearing a mask and then yeah, I go to my daughter's school where there's twenty kids in there in the classroom and she's got to wear one all freaking day. Right, and that's 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 the weird part too. That's that doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And kids aren't and kids aren't supposedly don't get it as easily, and they don't get and, sick if they do get it. And right, yeah, the, the the chances of a kid going to the hospital are like minuscule. Mm-hmm. And the thing that bothers me is, um, so we're talking about public school, obviously, and so they they have to do all this stuff but if you look at like a private school like that right down the road like the church we go to has a, has a private school attached to it and it's a pretty big school it's not like not the size of like a public school but they don't they have mass optional there and they have almost no covid cases to report from like that's like hmm. it's almost like yeah, it's, I, how does that how does that work? How could there possibly be you no know, COVID here if no one's wearing masks? Right. Yeah. It's yeah. It's I don't know. It's just it's confusing, and I don't I don't really have any thoughts on it. I don't. I'm not a doctor. I'm not a psychiatrist. I don't know, but I guess it is what it is. And yeah, it's such a hot button topic too. Like I know I'm, you can't say one I'm, thing or another. I'm pretty passionate about it one way, but there are people who are way more passionate about it the other way too Mm -hmm. so it's yeah it's depending it doesn't matter what you say about it you're pissing somebody off or you're you know boiling somebody's blood and i'm kind of even keel about it and i mean it's a thing but what do you i don't know what do you do anyways yeah so how was that for your first podcast show uz it was cool. I feel like I'm on the Joe Rogan experience. Yeah, or something. right. <laughs> I know, I, first maybe ten, ten people might listen to this, so that's good. Um, <laughs> but thanks for having me on. I appreciate it. Well, thank you for coming on here. I appreciate you walking all the way down here and uh, sharing your thoughts and your your views and and telling me some stories and all that. So. Thank you for coming on Stay at Home Dads podcast. Anybody out there, please uh, tell your friends, subscribe, do a review, all that shenanigan stuff. I appreciate it. Reach out to me on social media and find this podcast on all the platforms, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google, Amazon Music. And uh, that's it. Thank you, Doug. Thank you. And uh, we'll see everyone next week.